Okay, so this is Action Jackson by Jan Greenberg and Sandra Jordan, illustrated by Robert Andrew Parker. This is an old book from a library that I got for free because it had some water damage. So if you're wondering what those are, it's not part of the illustrations. It's actually part of the water damage. In the afternoon, Jackson Pollock puts on his paint-splattered boots and walks across the yard. The wind blows in front, the wind blows in from Gardener's Bay, bringing the scent of salt, marshes, and sea lavender. His eyes miss nothing. Sunlight on the tree branches, tangled stalks of blackberry bushes, beetles crawling in the grass underfoot. Caw, caw, the crow, he tamed, flies down and lands on his shoulder. His border collie, Jip, runs in circles. Oops. demanding a walk across the fields and down a country road to the wide sandy beach but Jackson turns and keeps going mm. the gray weathered barn used to be filled with rusted machinery old fishing gear and broken tools now it's his art studio a place for painting. Some artists put a canvas on an easel or hang it on a wall. Not Jackson. He spreads his out like a sheet, smoothing it flat with his large hands. He wants his paintings to be big, big as the sky out west where he grew up. Flat as the marshland behind the house. Sunlight pokes through cracks in the boards, and flies buzz in the dusty studio air. Sliding doors rattle on their frames. He sits silent on the floor, staring at the blank canvas. Some artists cover the canvas with a base coat of white paint. Not Jackson. He wants the paint to soak into the surface, leaving bare patches peeking through the stains of color. Some painters use oil paint or watercolor. Not Jackson. He'll use ordinary house paint from the hardware store to make this painting. Some artists paint pictures of flowers or people or landscapes. Not Jackson. He expresses his thoughts and feelings directly onto the canvas calling it energy and motion made visible. And still he sits, surrounded by the cans of enamel, brushes stiff with dried paint, knives, sticks, a spatula, and canvases waiting. That looks fabulous. I love this painting. At last, he stands. He chooses a stick and dips it into a can of syrupy paint. Slowly, he circles the canvas. Stepping around the edges, straddling the corners, black lines form a tangled web. Now he chooses a brush. Working toward the middle, sprays of color, tan, teal, yellow, and white. An athlete with a paintbrush, he uses his whole body to make the painting. Layers build with each gesture, new colors emerging, blending, and disappearing into the wet surface. He swoops and leaps like a dancer, painting paint trailing from a brush that doesn't touch the canvas. I want to make a longer and longer line. I want to keep it going. Hours go by like minutes. Suddenly, he feels exhausted, used up, his inspiration gone. Things get in the way of the flow, like roots blocking a soil line. He puts down the brush and goes into the house to help make supper. His mind filled with thoughts about the wet painting back on the studio floor. The next afternoon, Jackson prowls around the canvas, 
studying his work, but he doesn't pick up a brush. Instead, he walks to the beach past the sandy marshes and the tall Spartina grass that waves in the breeze. He spends hours sitting on a grassy dune watching the gulls. Oh, his face is like right on the crease there. Sorry about that. In the barn, the layers of paint dry. Almost a week passes before he dips a brush and begins his dance. What is he thinking? Does he see the sunlit beach, the patterns of waves, the interlacing branches of the trees, the lush summer grass outside his studio? I don't know where my pictures come from. They just come and the paint flows. Like the Native American sand painters he saw as a boy out west, he moves around the canvas coaxing the paint into loops and curves. On the floor, I am much more at ease. I can walk around it, work from the four sides, be in the painting. Fireworks splatter of rosy pink, twisting ropes of white, spangles of silver, a lavender glow where pink and blue black meet. Jackson listens to jazz recordings in the evenings. He likes musicians who improvise, inventing their own melodies as they play. While he paints, the notes spin over and over in his memory. Swish and swish again. The rhythm of the brush matches the rhythm of the music. If a penny fell out of his pocket, he would leave it. An insect lands in the wet paint. And there it stays. Nails and tacks become part of the texture. He caresses the surface with sticky, paint-stained hands. One, then two, handprints across the canvas. His eyes move up and down, back and forth with light steps. He follows the sweep of his brush. He stops and a pool of paint pauses. Paint, paint, and more paint, dripping, pouring, flinging. The painting has a life of its own. I try to let it come through. Again, he stops. He climbs the ladder to look down at the whole canvas. Every muscle aches, but his eyes, his mind, and his heart know the painting is finished. This is one of his most famous paintings. Some people will be shocked when they see what he has created. Some angry, some confused, some excited, some filled with happiness that they can hardly explain. But everyone will agree, Jackson Pollock is doing something original. Painting in a way that no one has ever seen before. This is called number one, 1950, Lavender Mist. For the next few days, he and his wife, Lee, plant the vegetable garden. They drive into town in their Model A Ford. He digs for clams on the beach. On the weekend, friends drop by for a party. It will take another week for the thick paint to dry. Then Jackson and Lee will tack the canvas to the studio wall. Oops, sorry. Jackson sits, silent, staring at the blank canvas spread on the floor of the barn, waiting. Soon, he will dip his brush in a can of paint, lifting it high in the air to begin again. And this is a whole bunch of stuff about Jackson Pollock. So that is over. Um, we, with your chalk paint, will be doing a Jackson Pollock on your driveway. 
Jackson Pollock is an American painter. He used his techniques of taking paintbrushes or just even taking his hands, dipping it into the paint and flinging across a canvas. We're going to pretend that your driveway is the canvas. We're going to pretend that the chalk paint we made before is our acrylic paint. It's not acrylic paint. It's not going to stain your driveway, so don't worry about it. So we are going to take the paint and we are going to fling it, sometimes with our hands. If you have paintbrushes, you can absolutely use paintbrushes. If you have old toothbrushes, you can dip it in your chalk paint and fling the edges like this so that you can create a Jackson Pollock. If you don't wanna be messy, that's the best way to do it, is to take a toothbrush and maybe even hold it with one hand and, and fling the bristles with the other hand, and that's the um, least messy way to do it. But if you wanna be messy, Jackson Pollock was very messy. Very, very messy. So he got in his old clothing that was paint stained from years and years and years of painting, which you should too. You should get in not so good clothing because you're not at school, so who cares? So get in your really, really old clothing. Maybe it's even too small for you. Maybe it's stuff that's in the um, giveaway pile because it's too small, you've outgrown it. And put it on and fling some of that chalk paint that you made last week. Now, if your chalk paint has dried out you just add a little bit of water. If it's not enough water, add a little bit more water. If you want it to be a little bit more watery, add a little bit more water. If you want to put it in a little container and then throw the container, you can do that. You are Jackson Pollock. You can feel the paint as it flings out of the container. It's gonna be amazing. It's gonna be uplifting. It's gonna be energizing. It's gonna be so beyond anything you've ever felt before, I hope. So we'll see. So. If you wanna do that today, you can do that today. It kinda of took me a long time to do the book, to read the book to you. So if you wanna wait for next week, you have that option to wait for next week. It is absolutely fine. Now, I hope that you will be taking pictures and either sending them to me with your name and class or putting them directly on Artsonia. If you wanna know how to put your stuff directly on Artsonia, you can go to my webpage at Jefferson School and you can look under distance learning. It'll say everything that you have to do for this week. And then it will have a little bit saying Artsonia submissions. So you can put things directly on our online gallery, which is Artsonia, using the little code that is down there. It's real easy. So you put in the code, it comes to Jefferson School, you have a drop down menu, it picks your name, it picks your, um, your project. So you could either do COVID-19 projects or you could do um, the sidewalk chalk project and you can put it on either of those pages and it would be fine. So I hope you do this, I hope you have fun and hopefully I will see you, I miss you a whole lot. So have a great time. Don't worry about completing things. If you're too overwhelmed with something this day, then don't worry about completing it. You can move on to something else, okay? I don't want you to be overwhelmed through art stuff. I want art to relieve you of feeling overwhelmed. So hopefully I will see you. Bye guys.